Hello Baraka viewer. It's yet another episode and yet another day. We thank God for his mercies, his grace, and his faithfulness upon our life. Thank you for joining us and subscribing and commenting and following up for counseling and prayer. We thank you for your support too. Today, I'm here with Pauline Mwai, a minister and a woman of God. How are you, Pauline? I'm good. I'm blessed. Patience. Uh -huh. I thank God Amen. to come to this place and to meet with you and Amen. having a privilege to be in the Baraka TV. Amen. We give glory and honor to have you here. Today, kindly introduce yourself to the viewers just to understand who is Pauline. Thank you, Patience. My name is Pauline Mwai, mm -hmm. just as our Patience has just introduced me. I love God, love Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, mm -hmm. and in Christ alone my hope is built. Pauline is a mother, is a wife to mm -hmm. Mr. Mwai, uh -huh. and uh, a mother to three, one daughter uh -huh. and two sons. Mm -hmm. um, tell us, um, the calling that God has, um, what are you, what, what are you passionate about the work of God? Thank you, patience, once again. My, call, my calling or my passion, all the way since I was a bit young, mm -hmm. young is like when I was around 21 years there, I was so passionate about prayer and I used to pray so, so much. And that I can say that it emanates from my parents who are so, so prayerful. I think the same was vested in me. So that, that has been my area. And by and by, as I grew in the Lord, people could come to me with their needs and I could just pray for them, encourage them and take them even as my burden. So that, that, that has been my, my, my calling or my passion mm -hmm. until, and I was a very shy girl, so when um, the Lord started speaking through me, mm -hmm. I could not believe mm -hmm. because I just believed that my, my position is just staying behind there and just praying not to be in front, in front of people. Mm -hmm. So, but God works in mysterious ways and God has given us diverse giftings not what we like, not what we desire, because I could not be here today. So uh, I'm married to Mr. Mwai. I have three, one, one daughter, two sons, and I have a grandson, and I thank God for that. Amen, amen, amen. How did you come to accept the God, God's gift in you? Because sometimes you, you're called and when you look at yourself and the calling, you can't resonate, you can't put the two together. So how did you come to accept the calling of God in your life? Patience sometimes is not easy, <laughs> especially when God speaks to you, stuff, stuff that is so, so, so difficult for you. You just try to look at yourself to measure yourself comparing with the word God that God is giving you or to the people that he is sending you to. Sometimes you find maybe you are down there and they are up there and they are unreachable. Mm -hmm. So it's very difficult. Another thing is that uh, when uh, you look at how people give prophecies, mm -hmm. it's as if the church no longer believes in prophecy. So you fear, sometimes you are filled with fear. What will people do, say? And you fail to know that the one who has called you, he knows better and he knows you are capable of delivering whatever he has put in you. Mm -hmm. So it is so, so difficult. Even by the time I came into agreement with that, like I was supposed to go and share what God is giving me, it was so difficult, especially when I see people sharing and the insults and the, a lot of things. So I tend to fear. But sometimes it comes a time because God's word has got to be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. God just tells you you have to speak it. 
And sometimes when you read the book of Ezekiel, you see how Ezekiel was told, unless he delivers the message, he, the God will, de- will require the blood of those people from. So for the sake of that, God encourages you and he gives you the, the, the strength and the boldness and the courage to be able to carry out his mission. That's mm. what I can say. Amen, Peace. amen. So what can you tell a viewer outside there yes. who have received a calling from God yes. and they don't know how to step out in faith, in boldness? What can you tell them, encourage them? Thank you, patience. I can tell you, viewer there, the one God has called you in a certain, in a certain area of calling. May it be prophecy. Prophecy is the one that is, sometimes you fear a lot. You are filled with fear. And the challenge is there because you don't understand. And I can say that uh, that area of calling, getting somebody to sit with you like Elijah and Elisha walk together, that Elijah was able to train Elisha on all. Elisha was able to learn from Elijah. These days is not easy because the gospel has changed so much. There is a lot of an unbalanced gospel. Most of it, we see it's about prosperity. So somebody being, somebody to mold you, getting somebody to mold you and to tell you what it entails, to be a prophet. And that's why you see that there are a lot, who, a lot of people have fallen into divination, which is not the word of God, but they believe it as, as, as the truth. So I can encourage them to seek God and to go even and seek counsel and even sit with somebody who has got a prophetic mantle, not a diviner, who has got a prophetic mantle so that you can walk together. Because it's not about the person, it's about the message of God being delivered. It doesn't matter who God chooses. Sometimes you see God chooses people that even when you speak, people will try to they will, they will try to weigh you and to weigh the prophecy and say, hey, God cannot use this. But God God's eyes and the way God chooses people, it's unbelievable. God can choose anything. So that's what I can say. They should gather courage, pray, because like me, it has taken me a lot of time. Because I told God, this is a calling. A calling you are not telling me to go to a church somewhere. It's a ministry you want me to, to have. First, it was about pastoral. I was ordained as a pastor, but because of the issues I'm going through, I can tell the viewer the ministry of prophetic. It has a lot of a lot of challenges, but God gives somebody courage, and in the process of those challenges, you are molded. So I could not accept the pastoral call. call, call. I took my certificate and kept it there started complaining because I was going through a lot. You go through a lot, you need to be prepared. But God's faithfulness, he calls and he equips. He will equip equip you. He will give you that courage. He will give you that boldness to stand by the word of God. Because you have to live, you have to walk until you are able to differentiate your voice, the voice of the devil, and even the voice of divination. You have to differentiate because before you go out there. So God is faithful when he calls you, he equips you. Yours is just to arise and do what God has called you to do. Don't care about what people say. Don't care about the negative, the negative response you receive. It is God and he will stand with you. And that's why God told Gideon to arise and go with the strength that you have. So arise and go with that little strength that God has given you. Oh, wow. Thank you, Mom. Thank you for the advice. And thank you for coming and uh, at Baraka. Mm-hmm. And I know people will be blessed to get to hear your messages. Baraka viewer, as you have heard, the woman of God that has said, when you are called, especially in the office of a prophet, it has its own challenges. But you need to pray, step out in boldness, and f- speak out what God has put in your heart. In your heart, you'll meet challenges. 
but God is with you. I would like to deliver the message of the Lord. I have three messages, but I'm going to share them separately so that you can understand to avoid confusion. And I'll start with the one for the nation. And uh, talking about the one for the nation, I will start from the time it is started and the time I, it, is, it became clear to me that God was speaking through me concerning the nation of Kenya. And that is way back in 2007, just before elections. We used to have a prayer meeting, an intercessory prayer meeting, and we were closing the year on that, that day, when uh, after our closing prayer, uh, God spoke to me through a word of knowledge, and he said that there will be bloodshed in the nation of Kenya. Uh, we prayed, and I believe other intercessors were praying. So after the election, true to God's word, because he says in Amos 3, 7, he cannot do anything before he reveals it through his people. And uh, after the election, there was a lot of violence. There was a lot of havoc, especially in Rift Valley, that the people who used to live together as brothers for many years, they turned out to be enemies. There was a lot of animosity. Where we found, uh, where so many lost their lives, there are many children who are left orphaned. There were widows, there were widows, and a lot of property was destroyed. So after some time, around 2008, around February, then the Lord spoke to me, and he said that he is going to raise new leaders in this nation, and uh, he was speaking about our two current leaders. And I asked the Lord how, because they were, both of them were two different parties, and uh, I could not connect how they can come together and work together as a team in the highest seat of this land. Now after that, to make it cause me to doubt more whether it was a lot, the issue of uh, ICC came and there was a lot of confusion. But as the case continued, I thought that uh, the word can never come to pass. But if you read Numbers 23:19, the Bible tells us that God is not a human to lie, neither is he the son of man to repent. Then I got carried by a by, even as I, uh, even as I prayed, even as I waited for the word of God, and God at some point he said that no case to answer. And that was confirmed by a lawyer later, a few months or a few years later, that the case is null and void. So it continued like that and uh, God brought his word to pass because the two, the two became leaders of our nation. And after, the, after that, they started very, very well. And during the, their, their swearing in office, uh, in the morning very early, the Lord gave me this scripture of Isaiah 43, 19, that is going to do a new thing in the land, land of Kenya. To my surprise, uh, during the day, there was a bishop who prayed for them during the swearing in, and he repeated the same message. And then the Lord told me that the new thing that he's going to do is that the way he used the two to bring sanity in Rift Valley during the time of those challenges of uh, animosity. He is going to use them to hand over the mantle of leadership to a new breed of leaders, to a new generation in a dimension we have never thought of. So after that, uh, they started very well until some time we could see some, some differences that we are seeing even now. And I just continued to pray and asking God, you told me that these are going to pass over the mantle to a new generation, to a new breed of leaders. 
And now I could not understand. It's a, like I started doubting the word of God. But God encouraged me, but whatever surprised me so much, and to believe that God keeps his word. It's July, it's a July, July, July last year. After I had finished my prayer, my prayers in the morning, very early around 4.30, it's as, as if I was asleep, I was not asleep in between there. I saw three people. So this is a message I would like to, I was just giving the introduction of where the Lord started ministering to me concerning the land so, so that I come to this point which I want us to take it very seriously, especially at this time when we are experiencing a lot of confusion and we are not able to know what is happening next and we have been, some have been carried away, especially to the church, to, 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 to lift up their spiritual antennas and be able to discern the times of the season. So 2020, so I saw three men. One man was up in a hill, facing another one who was going down a hill. On the left of, on the, left of the person on a hill was a lady who, who had worn a red, a red dress. And she pretended that she was not part of the conversation that was going on, because two, these two men had a conversation. As he had a conversation, the man of the, on the top, his feet, it is as if his feet were bound, and there was a bit of darkness. He was trying a lot to reach the man that was going down the hill. All this time, I did not hear what they were talking about. But at some point, it's as if they disagreed because I heard the man that was going down the hill and he, was, he pointed at the man on top of a hill and asked, Una fikiri watoto wetu atapata nini? So after that, this man was so, he looked so, he was so, he had a, a graduation gown and he had on his shoulders was, was a piece of, a piece of animal, animal, um, animal skin. And he had a hat that was made of animal skin too. So when I tried to think of unafikiri watoto wetu atapata nini, it took me to the time when God spoke to me in 207, 208, saying that the leadership will go to another dimension. So I understood that, that when he is asking unafikiri watoto wetu, so it is the watoto of those who are less privileged in the society. So that's how I took it. So after that, that thing disappeared and this now opened a new chapter for me because after that I was so disturbed and I was hearing the voice saying, tell them, tell them, tell them. It was so difficult for me. So uh, I started sharing in the, in the WhatsApp, but a man of God was sent to me and uh, he told me, the Lord is saying he has given you a message and you need to deliver it to the people that are concerned. So I started praying and I told God, now you have to guide me, you have to make a way. I, I started looking for a place, especially in the media. I was not very okay financially. The, most of the media, they changed and I thank God for Baraka TV that they have given me an opportunity to share the message of God because it's not all about me. So after this, uh, I took a letter to one of the leaders. And I took the letter, it has taken too long. So I think God's timing is the best because I think this is the best time and he works in his own ways which we have to follow. So I really appreciate and at this point, so I'm going to give a separate message for the body of Christ, I would ask the church to arise and be able to not to compromise God's word, to listen to what, what the Lord is saying and to align with God's purpose. And God's purpose, First Timothy tells us that we need to pray for the, those who are in leadership, so that our nation, when they prosper, our, the land prospers, our nation will prosper and will also prosper. So we have a responsibility to arise 
and take our position. Because when we read Jeremiah 1 verse 10, God has given us power and authority. As he had given the prophets of the old King Ezekiel, Jeremiah, the, promise who, the, the, the prophets who could not compromise, but they stood by the word of God. Because God has called you, pastors, leaders of the church, he has called you to address the issues that are not going well. And that's when you see that in the old, like in Akinandavian, they used to, they, 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 the prophets used to approach them. And when they approach, they could not compromise. They would take God at its word and act according to the word of God. So what I would advise as ourselves as Kenyans is to, to take our position. To bring so that there will be no bloodshed in our land because those who saw what happened in Rift Valley, it was not a very good thing and it is like a pattern since we received the independence that blood has got to be spilt in our land every time during election. And what I can say if we can stand up like Christians and say it is not going to happen. We are the voices, we are the, we are the oracles of God, we speak and it will happen. But compromise aside, we are not ready to lose more lives. We are not ready to, be, to, to walk under incitement of those who want the blood to be shed. There was only one sacrifice that was shed on Mount Calvary, the blood of Jesus Christ, that covers every area of this nation of Kenya. And we refuse, there is no blood shed anymore in Jesus' name. So I pray that you are going to to the word of God. We should not criticize or speak anything. It's good to keep quiet and pray, take your position, watch to see if the word of God is going to stay in fulfillment. Because the three people that have mentioned God spoke to me beyond this and he gave me Second Samuel chapter 21. When there was famine in the land during the reign of David, Famine invaded the land for three years. David, a man of God that I would like our leaders to emulate, went before the Lord and inquired. God told him the reason for the famine is as a result of a broken agreement. On this point, I can see there is an agreement that has been made by our leaders and that those agreements, when they reach to the position that to the high position, they just forget and term the, the promises or the covenants that they make to be null and void. But I would like them to know that the covenant that we make, God rubber stamps them. And he follows to see that they have been, been fulfilled. And this can make us even Kenyans to suffer for the sins that the innocent lives do not, do not know. So even after David prayed and he was told that it's as a result of the broken covenant. He wanted to make things right. And in verse 7, as he wanted to make the things right, he did not, he did not uh, fulfill a promise at the expense of another. We remember Jonathan and David had made an agreement. So David wanted to fulfill the promise here, but he could not do it at the expense of another. If I was the one, I could say that Meshiboseth, since he was a cripple, he could have gotten rid of him. But for the sake of the word, we need to be faithful before God as we make promise. He did not kill Meshiboseth, but he was able to do whatever to bring peace and to restore the peace and to cause the agreement between the Israelites and the, the, the Gibeonites. To, be, to stand, so they were reconciled without compromising. So God, these three people, I, I will not say who they were, but they are people, people that are known, whoever, if we pray, God can reveal to us. But the same person and the same prophecy God gave in 208, it has to be accomplished. It has to be accomplished in the name of Jesus Christ because God wants to deliver Kenyans and he told me that he is going to deliver Kenyans from oppression. He is going to deliver Kenyans from the hefty debts that he has, they have put 
and they are, he is going to deliver Kenya from bloodshed every time of election. I thank you and I praise God for this. I pray that God will intervene and every word that has spoken, that God is going to fulfill his word and he is going to deliver his people from any form, even from the covenant, the sacrifice, the blank sacrifice that have continued to be made. He is a faithful God, he is slow to anger, he abides in love, that when we turn back to him, if our two leaders can reconcile, Kenya will be saved. We don't need to be selfish, it's not on all about us. The plan of God for the nation of Kenya will be established in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for the opportunity that you've given unto us to share your word. Lord, thank you because you are faithful to fulfill it, O oh God, and even to make Kenya a, 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 a good place. You are going to redeem Kenya, Lord. You are going to give us leaders, O oh King of glory, who are God-fearing, O oh God, like Daniel, man full of wisdom. The Lord, there will not be, be going to be any blanched, Lord. There's the poverty, the oppressed, oh God, are going to be lifted up because you have blessed us as Kenyans, oh Father. Help us Christians, oh Father. Come election, even in this means of confusion, oh God, and a lot of nasty words being exchanged. Lord, you are going to bring a turn around in our nation. That is a godly nation, oh Father. We have, we have experienced your faithfulness in the past and we believe even now, Lord, you are doing the same, oh God, and you are going to turn things around for your own good and for the good of the Kenyan citizens. Lord, you are here, you saying that you hear the cry of the poor and you are going to come in to redeem them. Lord, I thank you and I bless you in Jesus' name, I pray.